Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. This is the first part of a series explaining why climate science is broken. Climate science is driven by politics. The central body around climate science is called the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. It's part of the United Nations. The title contains the word government, and it also contains the words climate change. The purpose of this governmental body is not to study climate, but rather it's to develop the basis of justifying global climate action. The UN announced the contents of their 2014 report four years earlier in the year 2010. What the scientists found doing their research over the next four years was irrelevant to the conclusions of the report. The IPCC results are predetermined, and the scientists are just there to provide cover for the politicians. The modern global warming hysteria began with NASA's James Hansen testifying before a Congress on a very hot day in June 1988. This was the front page of the New York Times on June 24, 1988. Global warming has begun, expert tells Senate. The night before that hearing, Hansen and Colorado Senator Tim Wirth snuck into the building and sabotaged the air conditioner. This is what Senator Wirth later told PBS. We called the Weather Bureau and found out what historically was the hottest day of the summer. Well, it was June 6th or June 9th or whatever it was, so we scheduled the hearing that day, and bingo, it was the hottest day on record in Washington or close to it. It was stiflingly hot that summer. At the same time, you had this drought all across the country, so the linkage between the Hansen hearing and the drought became very intense. What we did was went in the night before and opened all the windows. I'll admit it, right? The air conditioning wasn't working inside the room, and so when the hearing occurred, there was not only bliss, which is television cameras and double figures, but it was really hot. So Hansen's given this testimony. You've got those television cameras back there heating up the room, and the air conditioning in the room didn't appear to work. So it was sort of a perfect collection of events that happened that day, with the wonderful Jim Hansen who was wiping his brow at the witness table and giving this remarkable testimony. One good way to produce warm temperatures in Washington, D.C. is to sabotage the air conditioner. The summer of 1988 was very extreme. Hurricane Gilbert was one of the most intense hurricanes on record. I was living in Houston at the time, and had the hurricane made landfall in Houston as predicted, it would have done incredibly large amounts of damage there. The U.S. was experiencing a massive drought, and the Mississippi River nearly dried up, and much of Yellowstone Park burned that summer. The summer of 1988 was a fantastic propaganda coup for climate alarmists and politicians. James Hansen told Congress that he was 99% certain that summers were going to get much hotter and droughts were going to become much more frequent. He said that the chances of summer drought in the low and middle latitudes would be 1 in 3 by the year 2030 as against 1 in 20 in the 1950s. So let's see how Hansen's forecast did. This graph is from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and shows precipitation for the United States going back to the year 1895. You can see that it's been steadily increasing. Hansen gave his testimony right here during a very bad drought, but since then the United States has been getting very wet, and this year has been in fact the wettest year on record in the United States. There's been very little drought in the U.S. over the past decade, compared to the 1950s when the United States was in drought most of the time. So Hansen got everything exactly backwards. Now let's look at heat waves. This graph shows the summer percent of days above 95 degrees Fahrenheit, 35 Celsius, at all Northeast U.S. historical climatology network stations. Hansen gave his testimony right here during what was arguably the hottest summer on record in the Northeastern U.S. But the trend since the 19th century is sharply downwards, and recent years have been among the coolest on record in the northeastern United States. You can see that the frequency of hot days in the northeastern U.S. used to be much higher prior to 60 years ago. And if we look at the entire country, the trend of decreasing hot days is sharply downwards over the past century. Hansen had no idea what he was talking about, but this is not about science, it's about politics. Al Gore was elected vice president in 1992, shortly after the coolest summer on record in the United States. The climate wasn't cooperating with global warming theory, so Al Gore took matters into his own hands. 
Vice President Al Gore immediately started purging the nation's top scientists when he took office in January 1993. One of Gore's first targets was Dr. Bill Gray at Colorado State University. Dr. Gray was the top tropical meteorologist in the world and the man who invented hurricane forecasting. Gore invited Dr. Gray to a global warming conference he was holding in Washington. Dr. Gray said he'd be happy to attend, but Gore needed to know that he was not a big believer in Gore's theories. Gore responded by cutting off Dr. Gray's funding. Dr. Gray had received funding every year from NOAA for about 30 years prior to that, but he never got another penny out of the government as long as he lived. The world's most respected tropical meteorologist couldn't get any funding from the government simply because he disagreed with Vice President Al Gore. Another victim of the Gore purge was Dr. William Happer from Princeton. Dr. Happer is one of the most respected radiative transfer experts in the world, and he was head of energy research at the Department of Energy. But because of his disagreement with Al Gore about global warming theory, he was quickly relieved of his job. That's a great way to create a consensus. You simply purge anyone who disagrees with you. When he took office in 2008, Barack Obama continued the purge against skeptical scientists. Obama has no background in science, but Climate Central bragged that he was laying down a scientific gauntlet for climate change deniers. Barack Obama compared many of the world's top scientists to the Flat Earth Society. This included Nobel Prize winners and the world's most respected physicist, Dr. Freeman Dyson. While Obama was president, his Secretary of the Interior threatened any climate skeptics who happened to be working for the government. And then after scientists were purged and threatened into silence, Barack Obama announced that there was a 97% consensus. There's absolutely no scientific basis to Obama's claim, but that doesn't make any difference because this is about politics, not science. The people who are actually funding and driving climate alarmism are billionaires in the Democratic Party, like Tom Steyer and Michael Bloomberg. Democrats always said they didn't want billionaires controlling politics until the billionaires turned up on their side. And now these same billionaires are playing a key role in controlling the scientific discussion. But the time of science has completely disappeared at this point. Climate activists no longer need alarmist scientists like Michael Mann, and they're starting to purge them too. Climate activist Natalie Molina Nino threw Michael Mann under the bus yesterday. She said, Dear Nature, we're done reading the mansplaining trash from myopic white bros who do not speak for those on the front lines. Michael Mann has been and continues to be problematic and dated. Publishing his mediocrity isn't a good look. This sort of vicious attack on a scientist based on his race and gender appears to be acceptable among climate activists at this point. And then Natalie continued her vicious attack against Michael Mann later. Climate activists no longer need scientists on either side of the debate. Climate alarmists like Michael Mann played a dangerous game allowing politicians to call the shots, and now the politicians no longer need them. Climate alarmism no longer has anything to do with science. Political activists now completely control the climate agenda. In my next video, I'm going to explain why the entire climate science process has always been fundamentally broken and why it never had any chance of being successful. I'm going to contrast the broken process behind academic climate science with the very successful engineering environment which I'm used to. If you find these videos helpful, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Twitter. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on propaganda and junk science for a long time.